<laughs> okay, recording. Okay, okay. So this is our coffee nook, and one of my biggest pet peeves is that coffee grounds really collect on top of the nook. And it happens in a bunch of different stages throughout the coffee process. And this is when the coffee grounds always fall onto the ground. Oh, you have a different strategy of doing that. Yeah, well, it, it's a problem both ways, right? So you, And flipping it upside down as well. Yeah, so you could also flip it this way. So. Oh, I leave it on and flip it. Here, what I do, and which still forms a bit of a mess, is flip the whole thing upside down, then you have a cup. But still, there's like many opportunities for spilling grounds on the whole way. That's why you spill so much, because you, you do it in the air. But look, still, like it's still, it's still falling on the ground. Yeah, for sure, it's a definite problem. Right? And then it always gets like stuck in here, and you gotta tap it, and then more falls on the ground. And then we've just been resting this on top of our kettle, but now the kettle has coffee grounds all over it too. And then I set that down and it falls on the ground. So, I mean, we can always like wipe it off. But I think we can do a 3D printed solution. Let's go. So here's the coffee scoop, and I made a little sketch to track my measurements. So we're gonna need to know the bowl diameter, 1.6 inches. On the bottom, call that one inch. And the height of this, 0 0.8 inches. There we go, our beautiful sketch. I forgot to ask you a very important question. Uh, what's up? What color do you want it? What are my options? Uh, white, black, gold. Can I have pink? I don't know if I have pink. But you have Amazon Student, you filthy, I do have filthy. Amazon Prime now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, black would blend in. I thought you'd do anything for me. Here, let's look at the coffee. What about here. red? We always, oh, head rush. Um, we have so many red accents in our kitchen. Yeah, I mean, red would definitely stand out. I'm, I was also thinking of sticking it to the coffee maker. But I thought you were making shelf to catch Can you hold this for a second? I'll describe to you what I am imagining. Can I say hi to everyone? Scoop. Scoop. It goes into a holder right here on the side. Oh, I see. And it's like a little holder, and then there's a little compartment underneath that pulls out that mm -hmm. holds the grinds. Okay, that sounds good. I don't really think it needs to attach to the wall. I think that's just gonna be like an unnecessary. It's a little extra. It doesn't need to screw into the wall, a little extra. Yeah, uh, black sounds good then. Okay, I'm glad we got there. <laughs> <laughs> I just, sometimes you explain things that I don't really, I'm like, uh-huh, 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 and then you like make it, and then I'm like, oh, that's what you meant. All right. <laughs> I'll get back to you when it's made. Do you oh, thanks for coffee? the coffee. Yeah. So we're in Fusion 360, and I'm going to start by creating a sketch on the XY plane. And on this, I'm going to draw the profile of our scoop. So one side is 1.6 inches long. This is the open end. Draw a construction line from the midpoint. That's the height. This is 0 0.8 inches. And then the bottom is one inch wide. So one divided by two, you can just connect those up. So that's kind of gonna be our opening shape, but I need to offset it outwards so that there's enough room to actually get the scoop in there. I'm gonna make a clearance parameter. This doesn't need to be a tight fit. 0 0.04 inches will be good. Double click my profile, offset, minus 0 0.04. There we go. That will be our opening. Where'd my scoop go? Did I give it back to Eden? Oh, ha, it's back at the coffee maker. Whoops. So I want the scoop to sit in fully, 1.75 inches to the bottom. So I'll extrude this by 1.75. And I want this to sit straight up when you drop it in but the side of this scoop is angled. So the bottom of our holder also needs to be angled. We can easily figure out that angle. So what I'll do is create a new sketch on this plane, project the bottom and the sides. So this will be the long side, 1.6, draw a line from the midpoint and then draw a line that's one half down. So if we draw a line like this, that is the correct angle. I'll select that profile, right click, extrude, and we're gonna go all the way through here. Do I wanna just cut it off? Yeah, I think that's the easiest way to do it. And I'll just cut right through it. Okay, so there's our bottom face, although we missed a little bit. Extrude and pull that out the other way. Perfect. We're gonna need a bottom on here, so I'll create a new sketch on this slanting face. I'll project all of these shapes. I don't want this to be a solid bottom. I just want it to be a rim around the edge 
That way the grounds can fall out of the scoop and into a little drawer underneath. So I'm just gonna offset this profile inwards. So there's our clearance, which I think was 0.05. So it has to be more than that to actually hold the spoon. So let's do clearance times two. And we'll go ahead and extrude this and just by the clearance parameter. Actually, you know what? I think I made a mistake. If I go back into this sketch, I think I messed up. Ah, uh, yes, I had to, I should have done one more offset. So I offset it outwards by the clearance, but then we need to offset again by the material thickness. So I need to make a new parameter, material thickness. And for stuff like this, I usually use 0.07 inches. I have to offset my original shape out by clearance, flip, minus material thickness. And then if we change this one to a construction line, there we go. Now this is the profile that we want to extrude. So I need to edit this extrusion to be this. There we go. That was silly of me. So now I can create a new sketch here. Let's just offset this by material thickness. And then we can extrude that by material thickness. Okay, the only problem is that it extruded perpendicular to that face, which on every other perspective is not good. Yeah, and then we can just clean it up with split body. Splitting tools are this, so then we can remove this, boom, this, remove that. Splitting tool is this, remove that. While we're here, I'm also gonna add a chamfer to the inner edge to make the spoon easier to drop in. We get a little funnel. We make this material thickness divided by two, then it's half of the width. So the drawer is going to be down here and it's gonna pull out this way. So I think the easiest way to start making this is to create a sketch on this flat face. And then we can project all of this geometry and we wanna decide the height of the drawer. So it doesn't have to be very deep. I don't think very many coffee grounds are gonna really accumulate in here. So let's make it come down one inch. Close this up. Okay, so let's extrude that to the other side. And this is going to be a new body. Now we can start cutting away the sides so we follow the profile. So I'll do another split body, except this time we are going to split this. The splitting tools would be this and this and we can start cutting away the parts that we don't need. So I'll remove that, remove that. And then if I change my visual style to shaded with hidden edges, now I can see inside. And I know that we need to split this body. If I turn this one off, the splitting tool is going to be here. Turn these back on and we can remove the little part that's inside there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is turn that off and I'm gonna shell this out to create a box for the grinds to fall into. So I'll use the shell command, select this face, and we'll make the wall thickness material thickness. Beautiful. And then all we really have to do is make a cutout in the front and then a drawer to come out, although I am now realizing that this is a terrible shape for a drawer because you won't be able to pull it out that way. It's like a dovetail, it's trapped. So what to do? I'm thinking we just make a funnel into a box um, and that will be the best way to go. Okay, but first things first, we need to make a cutout in the front for the drawer. And in fact, let's just take the whole front off so it's a nice flush drawer. So I'm gonna use split body again. I'll split it here. And now our front is like a whole separate piece. I think at this point we wanna combine the top and the bottom parts because those aren't really gonna change very much. So let's turn this off. I'll do a combine. I'm gonna join these two together. And now it's only our drawer front, which is a separate part. And then let, let's create our drawer box. So to make this easier to work with, I'm going to turn on a section analysis, bring this down. Wow, this is a wild shape. Just leave that down there. And then I'll create a sketch inside of here and make our drawer. I need to project these lines. I could just draw a rectangle from here to the back, but that will make the drawer very difficult to remove. So we're gonna make a clearance parameter once again. I'll draw a rectangle to make our basic drawer, and then we'll select that rectangle and offset it inwards. 0 0.015 on both sides. We'll offset this again by drawer clearance plus material thickness. I could have just done this in one shot, but this is just how I think. So there's our box. So we can only bring it as high as this edge right there. Oh, you know what? This drawer can actually follow this profile it'll just come out straight. So we don't have to do that. 
I can straight up extrude this to here, extent type, to object, to here. Ooh, I should use that type of extrusion more. This will be a new body. And then did that work? I think, yeah, now it's following the profile. Okay, lovely. So there's our drawer. Now we just need to make a little funnel here so that our coffee grounds don't fall into the sides. And I don't even know if we need a funnel. I think we can just pretty much just make a plate right there. Create a sketch on this plane, the slanting plane of the drawer. Project all of these lines and just use that to make a closed shape. And if we extrude that to here, does that work perfectly? I think it does. Perfect, okay. Now instead of repeating that on the other side, I'm just gonna create a mid plane and then mirror that extrusion. The mirror plane is this, beautiful. Okay, so now we got our little box. I guess there is a chance that grinds will collect in there, like in these sides here. So I'm wondering if we should make that slope upwards to like follow the sides of the spoon. I think that might be the answer. So here's what I will do. Create another section analysis from this side. So we basically just want to make our little catcher semicircular in profile, but also sloping. So I think we need to do a loft. So if I create a sketch here on this face, so if we just draw a circle there, draw that up. So now this is a closed shape. So I need that and I need that. Okay, so I think that's all I need on that side. And we'll do the same thing on the front here. Circle to the edge, project this line from there up to there. So now I have all those profiles. If I turn my section analysis off and turn this sketch back on, I'm gonna to try to create some lofts. First on this side from here to here. Boom, okay. Is anything messed up or is that just good? I think that's good. And then we'll do another loft over here. From there to there, beautiful. This is looking good. I think we might be good to go. Let's check our section analysis to make sure. Okay, yeah, one thing I am worried about is the fit between these two. I think we need a bit of clearance there. So let me just offset this a bit. Uh, this, this has to be such a small amount. Minus zero, uh, blah, blah, blah. Try minus 0 0.01. There we go. Now we have a little gap there. Everything can slide in nicely. Okay, I wanna try to print this and see how it goes. We will definitely need support material for this overhang for sure. Um, if we print it on any other face, we're gonna need support material. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do to avoid support material is split this body here. Now the bottom piece for sure does not need any support material. And for the top piece, I'm just going to print it at an angle. And if we place it on this face, we have very slight angles, so those should print no problem. All right, one hour, 21 minutes. Let's get this started. First piece, finished printing, success. But real moment of truth, let's see how it fits. So it will be mounted vertically like this. Ooh. Oh, I didn't think about that. Hmm. Okay, so the spoon handle is free to rotate from left to right. But since it's top heavy, it still stays in there. The question is, do we care that this does that? I could add a little like rail thing that it goes into to keep it upright. I don't know, I'm not really sure if this matters. It makes it kind of like, like restaurant kitchen vibes. It's just very quick to put in. It's not super neat, but it's reliable. So I say we continue with the printing plan. And then if we decide that it needs something up here, we can just add it afterwards. Here is the bottom piece where the drawer will go and we can just use some super glue to attach those together. There's the drawer front and our drawer. You can see that I printed some pins and matching holes so that I can line them up while gluing. Insert our drawer, perfect fit. I'll put some super glue on the drawer front and then spray some activator on the drawer so that when I press them together, and there we go. It's just like woodworking, but on a very smaller scale. 
since we printed this face down, we got that cool galaxy texture from the textured bed. You might have noticed that I included a little hole on the drawer front. The reason for that is I'm gonna use this little leather rivet as a handle. So again, I'll just put some super glue in here, drop it into place. Oh, that's so cute. Look at that little mini drawer. I wanna go show this to Eden. Look at this cute little drawer. That is a cute little puppy. Oh, she's looking at the little cat. Can I show this to you? Yeah. It's really cute. Oh, it's so cute. It's a little button. Isn't that cool? That's like one tablespoon of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I made it to be exactly one tablespoon. There's gonna be the day where we're like, no, we're out of coffee. And they're like, wait, check the drawer. <laughs> so no waste in this household. <laughs> this is great, Morley. Thank you. So I got the coffee maker, our finished 3D printed scoop holder with the tiny 3D printed drawer. So cute. Let's glue this baby on. So I want to attach the holder right here. That way the scoop sticks out the top. It's very easy to grab. Just gonna use some five minute epoxy to attach it in place. I wanna line that up with the bottom edge that will allow the spoon to still stick out the top. Beautiful. It's, it's 1 17 p.m. 13 17 for all of our European listeners. And I'm making my first cup of coffee, not because I have some great self-control, but because I don't know how to say no to authority. <laughs> After much contemplation, I've decided that I might be part of the reason, so I'm going to do the Morley method. <laughs> Oh, what's this? Don't, don't, don't act like you're fake acting. This is actually the first time that you're using it. Yeah, but it's not like I haven't seen it before. <laughs> this is uncaffeinated even right after she woke up. Oh no! What? Did you spill? It's okay. Okay, ready? Ready, Freddy. It's Eden, actually. Can you do it one more time more uh, deliberately? Nice. It was so deliberate, I pushed the drawer out. I have no fear. <laughs> Back in it goes. Awesome. Does that work well? That works great. I just, I still have a problem with myself. Yeah, now the problem's just you. Just me. Can you 3D print a better version of coffee control, Eden? <laughs> yeah. I want it in pink, though. Did you clean this for the first time in 74 years because it was going to be on camera? Yes. I respect So cinematic. Okay, do you want to do the outro? Uh, yeah, what, what's... Oh, oh, yes. Uh, if you like what you see, you can support Morley at MorleyKurt.com slash Patreon. No, uh -oh. <laughs> Patreon.com slash MorleyKurt. Patreon.com slash MorleyKurt. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos because we've decided that Morley's contributing to this household by building a multi-million dollar YouTube channel and I'm contributing by entering, entering wedding sweepstakes. <laughs> yeah, and making great thumbnails. Great thumbnails. <laughs> you forgot a very important part of the outro. You have to what? thank my top patron. Oh, thanks, Kathy. Mother-in-law to be. <laughs> Yay. Yay.